Jonathan. I'm uh, invited by John to talk about uh, Stockholm as a, sort of a center for transaction technology. And um, I'm also uh, the co-founder of Bay, Mar Bay Markets and uh, the CEO for Bay Markets. Um, and uh, John mentioned that he was invited here to talk about, you know, to, by, by NASDAQ to talk about uh, Markets Wiki and so on. And uh, I think there's other reasons to come here than just NASDAQ asking you. And, I, you know, Stockholm is and, and has a history of transaction technology. Basically, we invented it. Um, or we, OM did back then. And um, OM, I th I'm going to talk about a little bit about first about history, about where we are today, and then a little bit what I and we think is the future going forward in this particular space, transaction technology. Um, and in, in Stockholm, it started with OM setting up a marketplace for trading options. And they did that at the same time when there was another company setting up called SOFE, uh, Stockholm Options and Futures Exchange. And um, uh, obviously, OM was the winner of that. And uh, OM had an electronic trading system. And uh, it, they named it, eventually they named it Click, which also became an international success that OM sold to you know, many, many other countries and exchanges around the world. Um, and so the sort of the theme of what I'm talking about is, you know, elect, uh, or transaction technology, but really it's about automation and automating the uh, sort of the financial markets and, and making it more efficient. And I think in Stockholm and, uh, you know, our background has always been sort of increasing the efficiency in the financial markets. And that has been sort of the, the way through from history and up to now, and hopefully also into the future. Uh, so I started talking about OM, and uh, I think another um, interesting part was that Sweden was very early on deregulation. So early on, uh, Sweden deregulated the Stockholm Stock Exchange and made it private, which made it possible for OM to acquire the Stockholm Exchange. And um, together, they got even stronger with, you know, both the cash and the derivative systems, and also they uh, developed clearing systems and so on. So they had a whole, whole suite of products that they could sell to the sort of international market, which they have done and are still doing. Um, so out of sort of the, the, the root system from OM, a lot of other companies like um, Bay Markets and, and many other companies have sort of sprung out, out of that heritage. and. Uh, you know, I can mention names like uh, Orc, now ITVITY, uh, Front, Capital Systems, now later SunGuard, now FIS, um, Trioptima, Sinober, Bay Markets. So th there are a lot of names, there are more names than that, but there are a lot of companies that have sprung out of this heritage. Uh, I could also mention that uh, um, when I was with Sinober and, and uh, Veronica and I worked together, <laughs> Uh, I ran a company called C-Screen, which was partly owned by Sinober, and which automated the uh, OTC market for equity derivatives and uh, equity options. And it's still the dominating uh, sort of platform and company within that space. Uh, so that was a lot about, or some about the history to, you know, how come Sweden has become such a center for transaction technology. And... Uh, I, now, you know, I want to move into to, you know, what's happening right now and what's happened in the last few years. And since the financial crisis and, and the fall of Lehman and so on, lots have happened and lots, a lot of changes have happened in the financial markets. So we've seen, uh, we've seen a lot of regulation, like Dodd-Frank in the US, MIFID here in, the, in, in Europe. And uh, we've also seen a lot of sort of changes to uh, trading. And uh, before we had a lot of bilateral trades. Nowadays we have a lot of, a uh, lot of that trade, bilateral trading has moved into clearing and with a central counterparty. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, much, you probably see, have all seen it, the know your client process that every financial institution has to go through today. Uh, there's best execution processes. So there, there's a lot of changes that has happened due to the financial crisis. And 
probably for the better, at least for the investor. We've also seen a lot of um, mergers and, and consolidation in the market. We've seen exchanges merge, banks merging, uh, brokerage firms, at, you know, very, very, a lot of brokers have merged and the bigger ones have bought up the smaller ones. And so before we had, you know, very many interdealer brokers and, and, um, and, you know, bilateral broker or brokers helping the bilateral trades, which are now moved to TPI cap and BGC and, uh, and uh, a few others. Uh, we've also seen that the transaction fees have gone down dramatically. So there is not so much money anymore to run a marketplace. And um, uh, all the electronic transactions have become more of a commodity. Um, that before the financial crisis, there was a lot of prop trading. A lot of you know, high frequency trading has grown a lot, even after the financial crisis. But now we see that trading has dried up in fixed income and commodities, FX, you know, foreign exchange currencies. Um, we also see that um, UBS, for instance, they closed the whole trading floor, which was the largest in Europe, if not the world. Uh, so one day when they come in, came into the, to the office, to the UBS headquarters in London, they couldn't get in because they closed the whole floor and they didn't tell anybody before. And a lot of other banks are sort of going that way too. So the proprietary trading, the prop trading, has gone down dramatically. Um, we've also seen a decrease in high frequency trading, the sort of the low latency game where, you know, the shortest distance to the exchange matching engine has been sort of the winner uh, with a lot of algorithms. That has also sort of peaked and is, is uh, on its way down. So it sounds like everything is going sort of south, but um, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, the market has moved from transaction to a lot of other parts of the transaction chain, to pre-trade, post-trade, clearing, and post-clearing. For instance, we, at Bay Markets, we work a lot with OTC trading, and uh, we have automated and helped automate the Singapore exchange a system called Titan OTC. Uh, the Oslo Exchange, a system called Oslo Connect, um, trading systems for oil for uh, Talapribon ICAP or TPI ICAP. So we see also a lot, a lot of move, movement in the OTC space where you, where you see a lot of uh, automation also in that space where it used to be bilateral phone trading, which is now moved to more hybrid and more electronic trading. And then we can you know, look at, you know, what, what happened back when OM started, what's happened now, and, you know, what's going to happen next? Where, what are companies like Bay Markets and, and my colleagues here, my peers, what are we focusing for the future? What, what is next for, for trading? And, and uh, I'd say automation and, and, you know, making markets more efficient will continue. And uh, the companies here in Sweden, we're in a good position to, be part of that movement. And uh, there, is, there is new regulation starting in January called MIFID II, which makes more requirements on capital, uh, capital requirements on trading, um, or positions rather. Um, the, the, the sort of bilateral markets are getting more regulated, fixed income, commodities, FX. Um, we, we see requirements on higher or, or more transparency and more reporting, uh, audit trails on every trade, how they sort of are built up. Uh, we see more trades moving from bilateral to, to central clear, uh, clearing. And uh, all of this uh, can, can sort of be summarized into one name, although the system's catering for this. And uh, it's called RegTech, which is sort of a guess a next step from fintech, more specializing in the systems required for taking care of the regulation. And beside reg tech, which is a large area, and uh, now you see all the financial institutions, not, not just in Sweden or in, in the Nordics, but also all over Europe are very focused on getting ready for MIFID to 
having all the systems and, and processes in place. And um, there's been a lot of consultants uh, out on, on all the banks for this and uh, a lot of system changes as well. Uh, but uh, other things happening, uh, which I think Johan will talk more about, for instance, is blockchain. Uh, you know, there's a, when blockchain really takes off, it's going to change the whole financial markets on, on payments and uh, sort of the CSD uh, settlement structure and so on. And um, it's still in concept, I would say it's still conceptual, but uh, getting closer and closer to being sort of a real thing. Uh, another thing that I think is, is on everybody's mind is cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and so on. And um, we will see a lot of, there are a lot of attempts in this space, both in blockchain and in, in uh, cryptocurrencies. And um, very few have sort of made any money yet, but uh, there are a lot of investments going into this. Uh, Bay markets, our road ahead, are uh, sort of a fewfold. We are focusing on reg tech. We're focusing on solutions sort of for the whole transaction chain. Um, we focus on pre-trade, post-trade and clearing. And uh, we're also expanding both in Stockholm and Oslo. And uh, I was going to say to some of you here that we are welcoming uh, master theses and internships and so on. So if you want to reach out, it's baymarkets.com. And with that, I think I would like to thank John for inviting me and uh, welcome to the next. Okay.